to how to use your breakdown. Has Nibiru been parked? So in this video, I'm going to talk about, you know, and ask this question really. Has Nibiru been parked? Okay, let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, so let us ask this question. Has Nibiru been parked? I believe the answer that you are looking for is yes. Many people would say it's not because the game revolves around a beer. That's kind of the truth. Um, to some extent, that is really true. Um, we have gone to, you know, make your deck, uh, your combos or whatever under five summons. That's really convenient. But the thing is, is that Konami has been releasing decks ever since, uh, you know, late, uh, late 2019 and early in the year of 2019 we've got Nibiru. But, you know, midway to 2019, decks were released and they completely ignored uh, Nibiru. They could do their full combo um, without um, Nibiru being a bit of a hindrance. I find this rather odd. And yes, you could say that, yes, uh, the format has revolved around Nibiru. But the thing is, at the end of the day, like you find 90% of the time or 99% uh, of decks don't need Nibiru at all to do their full combos. I mean... I would totally believe you if it was not for all these words. The decks that usually would lose to Nibiru, let's, let's give an example, okay? We had some decks that previously lost to Nibiru. These were Phantom Knights and Prank Kids. This would routinely lose to Nibiru. But with the release of the adventure, not anymore, and they top. Um, see such sorts of cases. We have like you know, Sword Soul and Exorcist too as well. As you know, Nibiru is gonna hurt that deck really, really hard. But leaving those two exceptions aside, ninety-nine percent of the time, Nibiru is a non-factor. In fact, I'm sure if anyone who's been playing the game for quite a long time and has been through when these uh, power cards were released, the cards that have aged, you know, really well in our competitive scene, I would say, are Dark Ruler No More, aged, it's aging like fine wine, Dimension Shifter, Facts. Nibiru not so much. Nibiru on the rogue scene is absolutely devastating and it's fantastic. However, in the current competitive scene, when has Nibiru been useful to you? Um, let's look at our current format now. Is Nibiru really useful against Sprite? Not really. Against Tears? Not really. Because they do so much combo that Nibiru is practically pointless. So usually like that's the issue Nibiru ha has been having um, for quite a while. That it just feels like against competent uh, meta level decks which are in our competitive scene, Nibiru is practically pointless and doesn't do anything to address uh, those decks' power levels. Pretty much, yeah. So, and that is why, in my opinion, I feel that Nibiru has been power. Kurikara coming out in Power of Elements. Has this power crept Nibiru, right? Ha is this the card that the power creeps Nibiru. Is this the card to change all things and to render Nibiru obsolete? Um, it's a difficult question, but you know, only time will tell. For now, I don't really think so. While the effect of uh, Kurikara is great, one of the issues with Kurikara is, is that it's trying to power creep um, not really Nibiru, but Dark Ruler no more. But the, pro the thing is, Dark Ruler More is a fantastic card, and it's near impossible to literally power creep it. Facts. Let's uh, go through the effects of Dark Ruler More. So Dark Ruler More states as a normal spell that your opponent can't activate any monster's effects in response to this card's activation, and once you activate it, negate all face-up monster's effects on the field. Whereas Kurikara states, when, uh, when an effect monster's effect when effect monsters you put us out of field, when the effects have already been used, you can tribute them, and for each monster tributed that has used already used its effect, you gain one thousand. And so then at the end phase, revive a monster from your opponent's a graveyard. Now that effect. You're so sexy. 
but the main problem with this is that you already have to have you you already have to have successfully baited the opponent's monsters highly unlikely and that's the thing if you already at a level at the competitive level at the competitive level where you've had had your opponent use up all their monster negates then 90 percent of the time you are probably winning and you do not need that kurikara in your hand usually an extender or going for game is more often than likely facts and yes having a 6000 uh, level one monster which possibly has taken a uh, an Omni Negate from your opponent's graveyard, which you tributed with Kurikara's effect, is pretty nice, but in the most likeliest of scenarios, it's not going to be useful, and the positions where Kurikara is going to be successful to activate to warrant usage, you're probably better with Dark Rune or more in that situation anyway, 100% of the time, and that is where we find ourselves. Now, is Nibiru, um, you know, has it been powered by this card? I don't think so. But the thing is, Nibiru still does feel very underpowered in the competitive scene. And it's uh, some as a, as a person who's been playing competitively, in my opinion anyway, doesn't feel all that powerful against the top meta decks. Because usually, 9 times out of 10, we have the solution to those cards. We have solution to Nibiru. The in deck archetype has a solution, and the way and the way uh, the decks that Konami has released so far usually do not ignore Nibiru entirely. For example, let's look at Tactical Masters and look at uh, Runic. Runic that has come out only summon one monster at a time, and they only use spells. So Nibiru is practically pointless. Look at Sky Striker. They never summon more than five monsters. Pointless. Branded, again, never summon more than five monsters. Pointless. Um, Tears as well can do their full combo, you guessed it, under five summons. Possibly can, you know, give or take. Maybe not the danger version, but definitely the branded version can most definitely do that. But still. Uh, Nibiru really, and even if, the deck is to be hit with an Ibiru, it doesn't really matter, as it can extend for days. So really, to answer this question, has Nibiru been power crept? In my opinion, yes. Um, will we get a more, more powerful version of Nibiru? I do not know. Um, maybe in the future we'll get something more powerful than Nibiru. But as of now, I feel in the competitive scene, to answer this question, Nibiru has been power crept yeah pretty much um because if if you play in the competitive scene yes nibiru does come up and yes you know there are times there are exceptions will apply where nibiru does uh bring home the bacon but 90 percent of the time leaving exceptions aside which rarely happen they do happen don't get me wrong nibiru can uh lift its weight but 90 percent of the time it's not really useful and if you look at the formats we've been having as of late nibiru has been falling out of favor usually the hand trap that you usually want in your hand is usually an ash blossom yeah it's ash blossom really ash blossom has been universal ash blossom is good whatever the format it's just gonna help you and so that's pretty much it okay we come to the end of this video so as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.